All right, so the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physics has just recently been awarded to three scientists pioneering the field of attosecond physics. And if you're interested in what that even means and why you should care, that's exactly what I will discuss in this video. More precisely, what does atto even mean? How to create an attosecond laser pulse? How we can use those to take pictures of quantum objects like electrons within atoms? And uh, what practical applications can this be used for? Okay, cool. Um, so what is atto? Well, it's not related to the word atom, it is instead a unit prefix. Like this is my SSD flash drive and it has some terabytes of data storage. Uh, which means now the prefix tera is a thing and before that it was giga, mega and kilo. Now, these are all larger and larger units, but it also works in the other direction, so smaller and smaller. You have milli, micro, nano, pico, femto and atto. 10 to the minus 18. One part in a billion billions. And uh, you might have heard the comparison that an attosecond to a second is the same relation as a second to the age of the universe. And uh, while the age of the universe is not necessarily something that most people can relate to, I think it still shows the extreme scale of attoseconds. Actually, I should really be careful. <laughs> That's all my videos on it. Okay. <clears throat> all right, um, before we start in earnest, I want to do at least a very basic introduction to what we're talking about here. So, atoms, electrons and lasers. Atoms are made up of the positively charged and massive but extremely small nucleus and the negatively charged electrons which can be found in the shell in different orbitals depending on their energy. The nucleus holds almost the entire mass of the atom while the electronic orbitals entirely define the size of the atoms. Contrary to some old models of the atom, electrons do not simply orbit or revolve around the nucleus in the same way that the Earth orbits the Sun. The situation is unfortunately more complicated than that. And if you're interested in more details about our understanding of uh, the nature of quantum atoms, I will have a video coming up which will be linked uh, here. Soonish. The electrons can switch between different orbitals, but only by absorbing or emitting energy, mostly in the form of photons, uh, meaning light. And if you want to learn more about this interaction between light and atoms, um, you can check out my video about quantum jumps, which will also be linked here. A laser is a generator for light, an electromagnetic wave. This light has a single frequency and is coherent, so all photons can add up easily and create high intensities. So grossly oversimplified, you could say that laser is light that is very strong and very pure. All right, that should cover it for this video. Let's go. Okay, so basically to create an attosecond laser pulse, we need an already very highly pulsed laser in the femtosecond range and shoot this at a gas. And this entire setup is actually not that elaborate and it will fit onto a regular optical table. So to understand the basic process of attosecond pulse generation, it's best to look at it in terms of energy. The neat thing is that you can think of this energy landscape as a literal landscape. So objects would uh, roll downhill by themselves and they will lose momentum when they're rolling uphill, etc. So essentially, if you understand what a ball does on a hill, then you will understand this energy picture. In this energy landscape, an atom is a sink that holds electrons in bound states. It requires additional energy to lift an electron out of this hole and set it free, 
so on its own it stays where it is. Or in other words, atoms are usually stable, thankfully. Now what's the effect of an additional electric field on this? Well, it tilts the entire energy plane as it accelerates charged particles in field direction. An oscillating field will tilt the energy plane back and forth, up and down. And this is exactly what the high energy laser does when hitting the atoms of the gas. So when done correctly, this leads to an electron being able to leave the atom by tunneling, which in our energy picture means it can hop out of the atomic well. The newly freed electron is then accelerated by the laser's strong electric field away from the atom, but soon enough the direction of the field is reversed and the electron is halted and accelerated backwards to the atom where it came from. Now there are several possibilities of what can happen next, but the one we're really interested in for our process is the atom taking back, reabsorbing the electron. But as this has been accelerated by the field, it needs to lose energy, which is radiated off as photons, so light. Now, the electrons can be knocked out of the atom at different points of the laser wave, and this means they will take on different amounts of energy and radiate these as different photons. Uh, the catch here is that all these radiated frequencies are related to the laser frequency, that's uh, the so-called high-order harmonics, and also its phase. So when they are added up, they produce pulsed light, the desired attosecond pulses. And of course, there are way more details to this and also way more problems to actually overcome in real experiments. But this is a very basic picture of the process and it's relatively easy to understand. Just like I said in my Nobel prediction video. Okay, cool, it's super small, but what's so special about an attosecond? Well, you can compute from quantum mechanics that most of the stuff that electrons do inside atoms or molecules or solids takes some tens or hundreds of attoseconds. That's most of chemistry at an atomic level and it happens at this particular timescale. Put very simply, to see what an electron does inside an atom, you need to be able to take a picture every couple attoseconds. All right, so taking a picture is of course not just taking a picture in the naive sense. You probably know what a CT scanner is. You need to lie inside for some time, the machine sends some signals uh, through your body and captures the data and uses that to create images. It does not literally cut you up into slices and just take photographs of these. That would be a problem. And the same goes for attosecond imaging. The basis for everything is this. Whenever the laser pulse interacts with the electron, this will also have a retroactive effect on the pulse itself, which can then be read out and used to construct an image of the electron. There are several different methods and algorithms for doing this. And uh, I will not go into any details because that would require quite a lot of prior knowledge to understand. Rather, I will just show you some pictures and give you a general idea of what's going on here. This, for example, is a streaking diagram. It shows the spectrum of an attosecond pulse and this can be used to reconstruct the pulse duration and phase. This was a 130 attosecond pulse, for example. As far as taking pictures of electrons, um, what you can capture is their distribution, meaning their quantum wave function, like the atomic orbitals you might know from chemistry. Yes, this means with attosecond pulses we can actually create images of an electron wave function, which sounds crazy to me. This here is the angular probability density of an electron within hydrogen measured over time. What you can see here is the electron oscillating between the 1s and the two shells of a 2p orbital. So you see that reading these pictures is uh, a bit more complicated than just looking at a photograph, but it's absolutely mind-blowing what, what we can create this way.
So all of this is very much fundamental research, meaning the focus is on finding out new things and not so much in um, creating new machines or products or processes that have immediate applications. On the flip side though, of course, every technological progress must be based on some fundamental research we, we found out before and we just don't know which beforehand. In this particular case with the attosecond laser pulses, we can venture some guesses though. Like the CT scans we already mentioned, the imaging capabilities of attosecond pulses may have some applications. In fact, there already are prototypes for analyzers of molecules in human blood cells for medical use. Also, what you can always do with a laser is uh, influence things. So, for example, control or switch electronic circuits. For example, one limiting factor of integrated circuitry, uh, so the basis of any computer or smartphone, etc., is the speeds at which electronic switches like transistors can be operated. Theoretically, attosecond lasers could speed up these operations by a factor of a couple thousands. That's like a hundred thousand percent. Personally, I'm most impressed with the capabilities of being able to image wave functions of quantum objects. And I could very well imagine this being a stepstone for some new tech or even a better understanding of quantum physics. I guess we'll see.